Hey Cubs and Cubettes, it's Grandpa here with another Bernstein Bear book, Too Much Pressure. When cubs and their parents get a little too busy, their everyday lives get a little too dizzy. <clears throat> if someone were to ask you who Bear Country's busiest creatures are, you might answer that bees are the busiest. They gather nectar and pollen, make honey, guard the hives, and do all the other things that have earned them the title busy bees. Or you might answer that beavers are the busiest. They fell trees, make dams, and build lodges with secret underwater entrances. There's no question about it, beavers certainly are busy. But if you were to answer bees or beavers, you would be wrong because the busiest creatures in bear country lately are none other than our friends, the bear family. The bears haven't always been so busy. They used to do the things that most families do. They worked and played, went to school, visited friends, enjoyed nature, and once in a while, they just sat around and did absolutely nothing. The bears hadn't planned on Becoming so busy, it sort of sneaked up on them. First, there was Brother Bear and the Little League. Then Sister Bear got bitten by the ballet bug and started ballet classes. When her best friend Lizzie Bruin started writing lessons, Sister just had to take that up too. And Brother wasn't about to be left out of something as exciting as horseback riding. That's how it was with the other activities. As soon as one of the Cubs friends signed up for something, brother and sister had to sign up too. Before anyone thought to say enough is enough, they were also signed up for swimming, gymnastics, soccer, soccer is how we get our kicks, <laughs> karate, art, I call it flower with drips, and computer club. Talk about busy, Mama or Papa Bear had to drive brother and sister to all those activities. Things got so complicated that Mama had to make a big schedule to keep things straight. Papa hung it on the wall. The schedule was especially difficult on Friday, and today was Friday. Will somebody answer the phone, called Mama after the fourth ring. I'm busy getting things out of the freezer for tonight's dinner. Can't right now, shouted sister from upstairs. I'm getting ready for ballet. Me neither, yelled brother. I'm getting ready. I'm getting on my baseball stuff. Since Papa was out working on the car, Mama had to answer the phone. She reached it by the seventh ring. It seemed a lot longer to Gran than uh, on the other end. Hello, said Mama. Hello, dear, said Gran. Is everything all right? You sound a little breathless. Just a little, said Mama. I was in the kitchen getting dinner out of the freezer. The cubs are upstairs getting dressed for ballet and baseball and Papa, but before she could explain about Papa, her shoulder bag got tangled in the phone cord, which pulled the phone down with a clunk. What happened, shouted Gran. There was an awful clunk. It was just the phone falling. Was there anything special, Gran? What Mama didn't explain was that when she stopped, stooped to pick up the phone, her hat fell off, and when she reached for it, she tripped over the cord and was now sitting in a tangled heap on the floor. I was just calling to invite you all to dinner sometime soon, said Gran. Love to, Gran, but we're just on our way out, so let me check our schedule and I'll get back with you. Fine, Gran said after a pause. Well, goodbye. Mama said, sister, what are you doing sitting on the floor playing with the phone cord? Come on, we're going to be late. <laughs> Drop me off first, shouted brother on the way to the car. No, me first, cried sister. No, me insisted brother. When Papa tried to explain what was wrong with the car, the spark plugs needed cleaning. Mama shouted, not now, dear, and roared off, leaving him 
in a cloud of dust. Well, Grant said as she hung up the phone, there certainly is a lot going on over at the treehouse. That's the way young folks are, said Gramps. They like to get out and do things. Why, when I was a young feller, doing is one thing, said Gran. Overdoing, she added with a sigh, is something else again. If Papa could have heard Gran, he surely would have agreed. There was too much going on, too much coming and going, too much rushing about, too much pressure. The Bear family schedule was becoming a nightmare, and it turned out a whole series of nightmares. The Cubs had planned to watch some TV that evening, but they were, were so stiff and tired, sister from ballet, brother from baseball, that they went to bed early, fell asleep, and dreamed. Sister dreamed she was on a strange sort of merry-go-round, a merry-go-round of activities uh, which went round and round and round. She wanted to get off, but no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't. Brother had a dream too. He dreamed that he was caught in an enormous whirlwind of baseballs, soccer balls, and computers. Papa dreamed he was trapped on a magic carpet that was zooming into a dark black hole, only it wasn't a magic carpet. It was an awful schedule from the wall. Mama didn't have a nightmare. The reason was that she didn't fall asleep at all. She lay awake, staring into the darkness, wondering how she was going to get through the next day. After a quick breakfast, Mama packed a lunch for Papa, who headed for some work in the forest. Then she shooed the cubs into the car. Hurry, she said. We have a difficult day ahead of us. There's art class, soccer, karate, and swimming, and we've got to squeeze in lunch and shopping. They climbed into the car, and she turned the key, but the engine wouldn't start. She tried again, but it still wouldn't start. Please, Mama, shouted brother, our karate instructor is very strict about being late, and the soccer coach is worse, yelled sister. Mama tried again and again. Please, Mama, they screamed, jumping up and down in the back seat. But no matter how hard she tried, the car just would not start. Oh dear. Then Mama did something the cubs had never seen her do before. She started to cry. Big wet tears rolled down her cheeks. The cubs forgot karate and soccer and everything else except that their Mama was crying. What's the matter? asked brother. Tell us please, begged sister. But Mama just went boohooing up the front steps and into the house. Go get Papa, sister said to brother. I'll stay with Mama. Sister followed Mama up to her room where she fell on the bed sobbing. It was all sister could do to keep from crying herself. It's Mama, you gotta come, shouted brother as he reached Papa's workplace in the woods. He told Papa what happened. Papa could see that he was upset about Mama crying. Everybody cries once in a while, son, he said. Even you. Even you, asked Brother. Sometimes, Papa said, the problem with the car is those spark plugs. We probably need new ones. But the real problem is this schedule of ours. I know Mama didn't sleep well last night, worrying about it. I didn't sleep too well either. I had this awful dream, admitted Brother. That makes two of us, said Papa. Sister had one too, said Brother, as they reached the treehouse. Mama stopped crying and announced sister, announced sister as Papa and Brother came upstairs. That's right, Mama said, smiling through a few last tears. There's nothing like a good cry sometimes. And there's nothing like a little common sense about too much pressure, said Papa. So the Bears had a family meeting right then and there. The Cubs agreed that two after-school activities a week were more than enough. Brother chose baseball and computer club. Sister chose ballet and horseback riding. True, they lost their title, the busiest family in Bear Country, but 
they went back to having a very good time doing the everyday things that most families do. They worked and played, went to school, visited friends, enjoyed nature, and, and once in a while, they sat around doing absolutely nothing. The end. Kind of reminds me of your grandma and grandpa sitting around doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs>